what's up? You are watching another edition of the Romania show. Uh, sorry about Friday for my fans who have no way of watching it when it's live on the internet air. Uh, we had some technical problems. I uh, actually had a couple technical problems. Um, one of which was I forgot to hit the record button again. Now, when I say I forget to hit the record button, it's a little weird because it's happened twice. And I'm really not that forgetful. Uh, what I mean is that uh, when the show is actually running, um, I have to hit several buttons while I'm doing certain things. And one button that I was hitting, uh, apparently you got to click it, you know, like a click, solid click. So <laughs> if you don't click it just right, then uh, it doesn't record. And I'm clicking all these other buttons. And so I failed to notice that it wasn't recording. And so that's what happened with that. Now, we also had some problems because I realized my computer is essentially running at maximum power. And if I fiddle around with too many different things during the show, uh, let me look at the camera, that might be helpful. Uh, if I fiddle around with too many things during the show, then uh, the frame rate starts dropping, and the next thing you know, you just hear me talking, and it's like, zip, 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 zip. So it wasn't that good anyway. And I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, we're still getting things shaken down here. Uh, it's only been a, really has only been a couple of weeks. I can't remember exactly the first day I started doing this, but you know, we've already made a couple of transitions. I was doing you know some pre-recorded stuff uh, that ended up being you know three or four hours a day for me to get that ready to go. This is live, as in uh, on the air live, and you know of course being recorded as I'm doing it with no modifications, so if I slip up and make a terrible mistake, or I, whoa, I fall out of my chair, or whatever, then uh, there's nothing I can do about it, so that's what goes with that. Um, I know sometimes Romanians uh, have a little trouble understanding certain concepts, uh, and, and I'm not saying anybody's name, of course, but uh, here in Cluj, or Unicorn City, as I like to call it, they started a television channel in February. Well, I can't even say the name of the months anymore. A lot of people say, Sam, why are you doing this show in English about a minute? Uh, oh, it's because blah, blah, blah. No, it's because I need at least, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day where I speak only English. And that may seem a little strange, but uh, I really don't speak English anymore. I speak a combination of English and Romanian all the time where I'll go blah, 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 blah in English and then say a couple of Romanian words or just whichever is easier for me at the time. Sometimes I speak Romanian with a couple of English words and vice versa. Occasionally when I'm drinking a little Spanish, oh, me gusta. But uh, I need to practice speaking 100% English, at least for a couple of minutes during the day. And that's part of what I'm doing here. February, the second month of the year, was when a certain TV channel, or two TV channels here in Cluj started. Um, one of them was basically a rebranding of an older channel that nobody was watching. And, you know, they spent a lot of money on it. Uh, I've been to their facilities. I've been on the air twice with these guys. Um, they always treated me very well. I don't really agree with their politics. But, hey, you know, TV is TV. Plus, I'm just happy that there's, you know, an alternative to the Bucharest uh, domination of the TV media in this country. But... You know, February until now is uh, four months, and these guys are already freaking out that, you know, they're not number one. They spend a lot of money. Uh, you know, I've been to their facilities. It's quite nice. They got, uh, you know, top-of-the-line editing suite. They got, you know, $100,000 cameras all over the place. They're always doing these promos, and they got, you know, cars, uh, company cars, and tents with the logo plastered all over them, and extremely expensive uh you know, dolly setups, which is like, uh, imagine like a little train track and the, the camera, you know, rolls around this special train track. So you get these really nice shots and they have a, a boom camera, which is like a, on a long metal arm and it swings around and does all this stuff. And they got a lot of really expensive equipment. Plus, of course, the studios themselves and all the employees. And they got everything from makeup room to green room and you know, it's an expensive uh, thing to do to start your own television channel, and I certainly understand that. And I don't know what the total millions that they spent on it, but it was a lot of money. But what they don't seem to understand is that it takes time. It really does. Uh, very, very rarely in the history of any business, whether TV station or internet vlog, as you want to call it, this thing that I'm doing here, or... Uh, a newspaper or a website or candy bar or a restaurant or anything 
does it, you know, you launch it and then immediately, bam, you're making tons of money and you're number one. Very rarely does it happen. It takes time. You know, this is not 1989 anymore and there's lots and lots of cable channels uh, on the regular television. I noticed um, I, I didn't have television for years and years, but now I do. And I think I have you know, 200 channels on my TV. So, you know, I'm flipping through. I'm not going to, you know, most of them I won't even see the new channels because I already know, hey, I want to go watch this other channel. Or even too, if I'm flipping around, if they're not something super interesting at that exact moment, I'm going to skip over it. And I've talked to a lot of people, even ones who live here, and they never heard of this channel. So, you know, they just got to understand it takes time. So, my point is, uh, with the Romania show, I'm not concerned in the slightest. Uh, I'm going to probably be doing this for six months before I even get the, all the settings right. Uh, I'm still filling with the lights. Uh, the sound, I would prefer to be a little bit different, blah, 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 blah. Plus, the screen's a little cluttered. You know, we're, we'll see how things go, but there's time, okay? Um, so, we'll get to that. I just got home not too long ago. I will say that if you're watching this outside of Romania, that we've had some super summer heat. I think it was 40 degrees Celsius um, Friday in Bucharest. Uh, it was a little cooler today, not a whole lot cooler, but uh, we did get some rain uh, just now here in Cluj. And it was going to be a little bit cooler, so that's kind of nice. Uh, not much of a news story, but <laughs> it's what's going on, and I realized. You know, people are watching this and they maybe they're outside of Romania or they miss Romania or they want to come here, they're learning about this country. You know, talking about the weather is kind of what people do, right? It's what human beings do. So we, we do all kinds of stuff. Uh, just a few stories to cover. Uh, just Prime Minister Nastaste's last week is uh, attempted suicide. I talked about it on Friday. Of course, that wasn't recorded, so if you didn't see it, you didn't. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details, but 99.999% certain that it was fake. The whole thing was fake. The, the fake suicide attempt was fake. The medical care has been fake. Uh, he's still in a plastic surgery clinic run by two guys. Um, one is a extremely loyal party loyalist. Well, extremely loyal party loyalist. Red team. PSD party. Petit in Romania. Uh, the ex-prime minister of course being the former president of that party. And one guy's a super loyalist. Got an honorary position with the Ponte government. The other guy used to be a PSD or a red team senator. Uh, he actually had to quit because he was found guilty of corruption. He's already got one trial uh, that he was convicted and then there was a technicality and he got overturned and that trial's still ongoing. And he already helped another guy who was convicted. Um, the guy's a doctor. He helped another guy who was convicted, you know, get a medical exemption, I guess we'll call it that, uh, to avoid, you know, going to jail. So, two known uh, loyalist doctors are the ones who are saying that he tried to commit suicide. And as of the last time I checked, they're, they're saying, oh, we're no longer going to release uh, status reports on his health. Yeah, you know why? Because everyone knows the guy's fake as crap. He's not, he's not hurt in the slightest. He's chilling in a hospital. So... The real question is, you know, what's the, what are they going to do? Because uh, are they going to send him to jail? Or his lawyers going to file the paperwork to get his sentence, uh, I guess they call it, uh, delayed in Romania, or Manut, or Manut, something like that. And there's also a uh, penitentiary hospital in a town called Giravlo. Uh, he might go there. Uh, it's essentially for, you know, prisoners who have medical problems, legitimate le medical problems. Although I was reading a report today about all the people since 1989 who have faked injuries to get out of uh, going to jail. And it's not just red team guys, a few orange team guys, a couple of ex-communist guys, um, you know, right after the revolution. It, it apparently it's starting to be a little bit of a trend if you're a political leader in Romania of any party and you, know, you get brought up on corruption or influence charges or one of these kind of deals. And, you know, you do your best not to get convicted. You call in all your favors and try to bribe everyone you can. But if, you you know, somehow, unfortunately, you get convicted. The next thing you do, oh, Christ, that was a little sick. I can barely, I can barely get out of bed. There was one guy who tried to get out of going to court. He said, I, I can't even get out of bed. Not the, uh, you know, current um, prime minister guy. Not Stasi, but a different guy a couple years ago. And, you know, just pathetic. But that's what you do. So Anastasia is still in the hospital. I think he's got something like two weeks 
technically at the moment before they can release them. We'll see what happens. I know um, it's not just me now or a few bloggers saying that it's all fake. Uh, I actually saw Monica Makwave, who, like I said, uh, she used to be a little more influential on the national level. She was the justice minister back in, I believe, 2004, right after Nastasi left. And then she became a Euro parliamentarian or a member of the European Parliament, not the Romanian Parliament, the you know, Euro European Parliament. But uh, amongst her many uh, skills and abilities is the fact that the American ambassador to Romania listens to her and believes every word that she says. So I saw a report saying that she was saying Nastasi faked it. It won't be long before the international community gets wind of this. They're a little retarded sometimes when it comes to stuff about Romania because, you know, fr quite frankly, there's only one thing people want to say about Romania, which is scandal and terrible things. And, you know, they'll get to it eventually because somebody somewhere is going to finally get the substantial proof that this guy was faking his suicide. I, I'm convinced 1,000%. Um, in other news, uh, Ponta, I mean, this guy is earning bad press by the bucket. Uh, Variety, a lot of, I don't know if people read Variety who are watching this or know what Variety is, it's essentially the number one uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles uh, sort of arts and entertainment newspaper, I guess it's a newspaper, it's like a magazine newspaper, and a lot of times it's mostly concerned with movies, but, you know, they concern, they concern themselves with the arts, and it's read by everybody, I mean everybody in the art world, uh, the theater world, that kind of stuff, they all read variety, it's very well respected. Well, they had a little article I saw um, this weekend where they were talking about Ponte and the ICR where he took the ICR away, or the parliament took the ICR away from the president's control. Tried to say it was a bunch of crap about, you know, they were wasting all their budget and all this other stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, the guy running the ICR happens to be a loyalist of the president. There's no uh, mistake in that, but uh, his budget was extremely small. I, I really wish I'd written it down because it's, it's nothing. And they mostly put on poetry readings and, you know, I don't know what else, in other countries. So they got a lot of friends, and they got a lot of influential friends. And apparently one of them works at Variety because they wrote up this whole big thing saying how it's like communist days are back and, you know, all this other stuff. And <laughs> Ponta looks terrible, terrible, terrible. I mean, if I was a supporter of this guy, I'd be like, dude, you got to go, man. You were just ruining everything. And, you know, basically it's true. He got his buddies to pass a motion in the parliament to take control over this tiny, tiny little government agency. And... For what? So he can put one more of his guys in a position of minor power to go promote poetry and dance? You know, so what? If you're going to take over Romanian government institutions, take over the powerful ones. Which, speaking of which, uh, I did forget to write this down on a little top story thing, but I noticed that ANAF, ANAF, which is uh, sort of like the IRS or the Inland Revenue Service of the British, the tax people, the, the national tax people, they, you know, they tried to modernize here in recent times, and you could pay uh, a lot of your taxes online, which, you know, was kind of a modern thing to do. Website, well, down. I don't know if it was hackers or what, but it's another problem for me. So, yeah, Pont is looking real bad with the ICR thing. He, of course, last week he wrote the Ill illiterate. I, I have to say illiterate. It really was illiterate. I, I think a, a kindergarten class using crayons in America could write a better letter than that. We're alert to nature with a bunch of BS and crap about how, oh, you're taking sides in Romanian politics. Uh, no, motherfucker, we're older. The journal Nature is older than the Kingdom of Romania. It's certainly older than the Republic of Romania or the country that it is now, post-1989. It's been around for 150 years. They're not taking sides in a Romanian political dispute. It wasn't written by a Romanian guy, and all the research pans out. You know why? Because they're a scientific journal. Science is about, you do the research, you get the facts that you get. Whether they make people happy or not, you publish them and that's the deal. That's what's the way science is supposed to be. But, of course, it's not. Um, and this week, on Thursday, I believe, 28th, big, big showdown. Big rumble in the Romanian jungle. Who's going to go to the European Council meeting? On your left corner, Trajan Basescu, president of the country. 
Orange team! Ah! In this corner, the new contender, Victor Ponta, the prime minister of the red team, who is going to officially represent Roman at a meeting where nobody cares who comes from Roman. Nobody cares. It's going to be Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, aka prime minister, and some very important other people, uh, I guess the British Prime Minister will be there, the French uh, President will be there. Most countries have a Prime Minister who goes to these things because most countries have a different government system than Romania does. Uh, Spain has a king, Britain has a king, uh, these are a queen. These people don't really do anything in terms of government stuff, they're just largely ceremonial. Uh, Italy has a president, but he uh, mostly just handles things when the Prime Minister's you know, resigned or no confidence or whatever. He has very little power. Uh, furthermore, we're the only country uh, that has like a strong president and a strong prime minister is uh, France, of course, um, where the, it's almost exactly identical to Romania, and then Cyprus. And then, of course, that's the Greek Cyprus, not the Turkish Cyprus. So, people are going to be very interested in what the Italian prime minister has to say and the Spanish prime minister, because Spain, you know, all those banking problems. And of course, the Greek Prime Minister, because obviously Greece is a big deal with the Euro and all that problems. And of course, Germany, the big you know economic powerhouse, and France, what are they going to say? And what, he gives two flipping crafts. Who from Romania is going to show up? You could send the janitor from my uh, old building. And blah, 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 I'm the janitor. Uh, please pick up your shoes because I'm mopping. <laughs> okay, nobody cares. So, Masescu said, Constitution says I get to go. I saw the proof. I think he's right. Ponta says, no, I'm the Prime Minister. I get to go. Prime uh, Ponta got his buddies in Parliament to declare that Ponta's going to go. has no legal weight. Uh, President Basescu said, no, I'm going to go. Ponta said, well, if I'm not going to authorize the fuel. <laughs> so childish. You know, I'm not going to let the, I'm not gonna let the uh, people fill up the plane with fuel and you're not allowed on the plane anyway. And Balsesco said a letter on Friday saying, dude, I'm going to go, so this thing hasn't been resolved yet. And of course, uh, like little children, mm, I want to go, man, I want to go. And the real deal is, honestly, is I do not even know what the big deal is. I, they're going to sit around, wherever these people are that go, um, of course, all the EU heads. So, you know, it would be the smaller countries too, Bulgaria, you know, and, and uh, my mind is blank. I don't know who's in the EU. Hung Hungary, you know, the North, the EU, all 27, 28 countries. They're all going to be there, sitting around a big table, blah, 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 take some photographs, you know, eat some lunch, and a few people will talk. And it, no matter what happens, no laws will be passed, no regulations will be, you know, written up. You know, just, it's just an informal, uh, it's a formal discussion about what's going on. And there will be a lot of press conferences and a lot of press statements, and I guess that's why Ponto wants to go. I saw a very curious statement from him last week. He said, it's not about me, it's about the president, and it doesn't matter who goes in the capacity of prime minister, but the prime minister needs to go because of whatever reason. And it was kind of like he was saying, like, I might not be around to be the prime minister to go, but well, we'll see. Somebody somewhere has got to blink this week because, uh, you know... <laughs> And the, the, the funny thing I heard was that, uh, you know, they, they have some official paperwork somewhere at the European Union saying, you know, who's going to come? And because it hasn't been sorted out, neither one of them is officially invited. So I don't know. It's going to be hilarious. Like, all 27 countries are then, like, outside the window, like, hey, fellas, let me in. It's Romania. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Did you, did you want to come? Oh, I, I didn't know you wanted to come to this meeting. I'm sorry. Um... I lost your invitation, dude. Uh, I forgot you weren't coming. You know, like Home Alone. You know, you ever see that movie Home Alone where the kid gets left at home by his parents? And you're like, how could that happen? Well, you're not that important. That's how it happens, uh, quite honestly. So that's uh, going on. Um, I, oh, before I forget, someone asked me, and I completely uh, haven't had a chance to give an official response, so this will be the official response. Apparently there was a woman last year in the United States. Now, I, I, know, I know her name is Casey. I, I cannot remember her last name. I know she had a big celebrity trial because she um, apparently killed her child. And I didn't have a chance to look at her. I literally got home like 10 minutes before I went on the air. So, 
or 20 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, I forget her last name, but the one who killed her child was convicted last year. I, someone asked me, uh, they saw a report, it was in one of these gossip, uh, online gossip newspapers, whether she was going to adopt a kid from Romania. And I said I'd do some research. I did my research. I don't see any evidence whatsoever that um, she's coming here to adopt a kid. I, I think a little people are a little confused. Not the reader or the person who sent me that question, but uh, it used to be in 1990s, early 90s, that adopting a Romanian child was a very famous thing to do because there were a lot of kids, orphans, and they needed a place to go, and the government was desperate, and of course they made a little cash doing it. Plus they really just didn't have a way to take care of these orphans, and a lot of people adopted orphans from Romania and became kind of like a, you know, everybody knows you adopt kids from Romania. Nowadays, I believe it's China, the popular place. But you can't really adopt kids from Romania. Um, it's extremely difficult to do. And it takes a lot of bureaucratic paperwork, and it's just not something that you can just, you know, fly over here and pay a little more. Well, I guess you could. <laughs> Everything's possible in Romania with a little bit of money, right? But legally, um, I'm not sure if there's still... There used to be a ban on adopting kids from Romania, but... Uh, I don't know if that ban is still in effect, but it's extremely difficult, and I really doubt that a convicted murderer in the United States is going to be flying over here and adopting a kid. So I said I'd look into it. I did my research. Um, I couldn't find anything on it. So my guess is it um, didn't happen. Oh, goodness, what else? I think that's about it. My goodness, I can talk uh, apparently 20, 30 minutes about almost nothing. Um, it is raining again. I should say it's raining, which is good. Uh, I rode in a taxi to get over here because I was running late. <laughs> the taxi driver was cracking me. This guy, I think he just fell off the turnip wagon. He had a super strong country accent. He's like, talking like that. And uh, these guys cracked me up. I really wish my entire life was filmed. Uh, I think there'd be some interesting shots in there. But uh, he was saying, that rain's going to cool it down. And, you know, he was right. Uh, so. It's definitely a little bit cooler. It was a little unseasonably hot, to be honest with you. And I'm looking forward to at least a little bit cooler weather. But I think that's going to wrap it up for now. We'll keep it a little bit short. And I appreciate you watching. And let's see if we can fade this out in the right way. And we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, send any messages to the contact information you see over here.